Okay. Uh, rise and shine, everybody. Dr. Lee, thank you for being here. Uh, can we uh, do a roll call? I see myself, Dr. Lee. And do we have quorum yet? Good afternoon, Mr. Chair. I'll go ahead and call roll. Council Member Gilbert Cedillo. Gilbert Cedillo here. Council Member Nithya Raman. Absent. Council Member Marquise Harris Dawson. Absent. Council Member Paul Krikorian. Absent. Council Member John Lee. Present. We currently have two members, uh, not, not a quorum, Mr. Chair. We still have to wait for one more member. Uh, are we able to go forward with public comment? We do have uh, Councilman Krikorian checking in. I think I see him. Great, thank you very much. Hey. Three members and a quorum, Mr. Chair. Great, so why don't we do, uh, this is a very short agenda. It's only two approvals and um, two other items. So why don't we go forward with about five minutes of public comment? Yes, Mr. Chair. As indicated on the agenda, members of the public wishing to offer public comment on items listed on the agenda should call 1-669-254-5252 and use meeting ID number 160-871-1866 and then press pound. Then press pound again when prompted for participant ID. Once admitted into the meeting, press star nine to request to speak. When it is your turn to speak, an automated Zoom voice will ask the caller to press star six to unmute. Let me repeat. Call 1-669-254-5252 and use meeting ID number 160-871-1866 and then press pound. Then press pound again when prompted for participant ID. Once admitted into the meeting, press star nine to request to speak. When it is your turn to speak, an automated Zoom voice will ask the caller to press star six to unmute. Okay, uh, we can start. Before Mr. that- Chair, we'll start public comment right now. Uh, one second though, before that, uh, Mr. Clark, I think we want to note that both Mr. Kokorian and Mr. Harris Dawson are with us. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Okay. okay. I hear the sound of familiar public comment. Okay. Uh, caller, uh, which items do you want to speak on? Oh, Call I didn't say a general public comment. You said Debbie Kim told me. So uh, what items did you want to speak on in general public comment? Stupid nigger. All items and non-agenda public comment. How much is my time, please? Three minutes. Three minutes? Yes. Two minutes of regular consent items and one non-agenda is three minutes. Correct, asshole? Correct, sir. You have good math. Thank you. Thank you, Diddy. Kim told me the right thing. Gil, I want to congratulate our heritage for Chinese people because we live in a country where there's no democracy. It is a government run by anti-federalists that we must propose and prevent so this is general public comment, Mr. Chairman, because it says you, nothing to you, do with I was just going to say that you, there you, has to be some subject matter related to housing in the city of Los Angeles. Oh, okay, Gilbert, listen. This is Gilbert. That ad by Mr. DeLion says that we have housing for homeless people and people with mental health. Then why did this country lose one 18-year-old man simply because he shot 19 children for housing. He, all he wanted was a home, Gil, and he had to kill 19 children. Why? I want a home, Gil, like yours, a white picket fence, and it says nigger herb on it. So this and has to have been at least one minute of general public comment already. Okay, then let me go to my non-agenda, you fucking rude bitch, motherfucker, asshole bastard. 
That's the problem with you niggers in Los Angeles. You don't want to believe. Believe Mr. Chairman, Emma. enough. You don't want to believe that you're a fucking moron out of two billion people in this planet. <laughs> and I said before, no, he's a fucking Chinese people have a lot to do with uh, the next Speaker, please. Next speaker, please. Okay. Speaker, could you please please give the items you want to speak on? And yeah, the original automatic go puppet food critic. All items and general public comment for that fucking Armenian. <laughs> you have three minutes, sir. Well, what about my general comment, shithead? <laughs> there are two items, and then you have one general public comment that's equal to three minutes, sir. Yes, that's right. Gil said it equals three minutes. Why, why can't you fucking add? <laughs> I don't know. Well, you just said. Yeah. Well, we just yeah, now. We, we, we found he's an angry speaker. FBI targets today are rather angry, aren't they, Gil? <laughs> yeah, so let's talk about item one. Do you want to serve on a commission with all those FBI agents all over the place? No, 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 no. You don't want to be appointed by Eric Garcetti to anything. Eric Garcetti is a fucking nobody. A perjurer, a liar, a cover-up artist. But at least he has good taste in clothing. <laughs> I would say no to number one. Then we get to number two. Another loser wants to substitute in... For a loser that got smart. Yes. Goat Puppet was in federal court jail a couple of weeks ago and saw that judge him that six-year federal prison sentence. <laughs> Do you want to be in federal prison? Then don't sign up for anything on these commissions. Wait till Rick Caruso comes by. He has enough money to buy out all the Chinese developers. Things will get a lot nicer. Now we have the Affordable Housing Commission report. But well, guess what? There's no affordable housing. Look at Paul Martin Kerkorian. He sold his house for $2 million. The bank's going to foreclose on it later, and the owners will be homeless. Looking for housing hey, from you. Some public comments, sir. Public comments, you can start. The general goddamn fucking comment. <laughs> we watched the debate with Gil. Gil didn't debate his opponents. No. He simply showed up to get a picture of him and Eunices and that other very pretty lady. I don't know who she was. She's nice looking, the third one. <laughs> and apparently that's so he can get his matching fun. See everybody? Jose Weezer did it the wrong way. You don't have to go to Las Vegas with prostitutes and Chinese criminals. No, you can legally steal hundreds of thousands of dollars, just like Monday night. <laughs> yes, who am I going to support for CD1? I'm going to support Unisys. But if she loses, remember, Gil. Thank you, caller. That's all we have for public comment, Mr. Chair. Thank you. Let's move to item one. This is the Housing Committee of May 25th, 2022. And let's move forward to item number one, which is a report. Oh, well, Mr. Bencomo, please go forward. Yes, Mr. Chair. Item one is the mayor's report relative to the appointment of Mr. Mario Ceballos to the Affordable Housing Commission for the term ending June 30th, 2022, to fill the vacancy created by the resignation of Nason Buchanan. Okay. 
Do we have him uh, here with us? Yes, Mr. Stabiles, if you could please uh, unmute yourself. Good afternoon. Good afternoon, Chair and committee members. Thank you for having me. You want to, uh, not everyone knows you. I know we find that hard to believe, but uh, for those of the committee who aren't familiar with your great work in our community, uh, decades of work, uh, you want to introduce yourself a little bit to the committee? Thank you. Um, committee members, my name is Mario Ceballos. I've been a um, one a, uh, an immigrant to this country. I came here over 45 years ago, and luckily I was blessed with having my family bring us to the city of Los Angeles, where um, I've been able to grow up, go to public school, and ended up uh, going to Occidental College, and subsequently made home um, and made water uh, in Silver Lake my home uh, for quite some time now. Um, is um, I see this as an opportunity to continue my service to this great city, uh, knowing that the city currently faces very challenging times and ensuring that every Angelino, uh, regardless of their um, immigration status uh, in this country, um, has a right to affordable quality housing. Um, I am also an individual that has uh, that is both a landlord and a renter. So I hope that uh, my perspective uh, will offer uh, insights to and possible solutions to this crisis where, you know, both landlords and, and renters can um, find themselves um, supported in, in their endeavors. And um, again, it's, it's an honor to be here before you, and I'm looking forward to the opportunity to continue to serve this city and hopefully serve all of you in this committee. Mario, for those who don't know him, he's been a leader, particularly in public health, and I've enjoyed working and collaborating with you uh, over the years in terms of the various initiatives to make sure that there's access uh, to public health and the work, the great work of Kaiser uh, over the years working with the state. And so uh, you are welcomed. And I want to move the motion to um, approve the mayor's uh, recommendation. That's a second, okay. Mr. Uh, Harris Dawson. Thank you, Mr. Kikorian. We get a roll call, or is this a consent? Yes, Mr. Chair. Council Member Cedillo. Council Member Rahman? Yes. Council Member Harris Tolson? Yes. Council Member Krikorian? Aye. Council Member Lee? Member Lee. Aye. Five ayes, and this item is approved. Thank you very much. Mr. Ceballos, thank you. Congratulations. We look forward to seeing you at Council. Thank you again. Item number two, Mr. Bencomo. Mr. Chair, item number two is a mayor's report relative to the appointment of Ms. Belinda Allen to the Affordable Housing Commission for the term ending June 30th, 2023 to fill the vacancy created by Gerard Garcia's withdrawal from consideration. Ms. Allen does not appear to be available at this time for virtual participation. Is there any objection from the uh, council members to the mayor's recommendation? I uh, move the nomination of this uh, eighth district resident. Second. Second. Here. Here. Thank you. Council member Cedillo. Cedillo, aye. Council member Rahman. Yes. Council member Harris Dawson. Yes. Council member Krikorian. Council member Krikorian. Aye. Aye. Council member Lee. Aye. Five byes. This item is approved. Item number three, sir. Yes, Mr. Chair. Item number three is the Los Angeles Housing Department and City Administrative Officer reports relative to the results of the Affordable Housing Information System request for proposals, request for authority to negotiate and execute a, for a new housing development software system and related matters. And this matter is also referred to the Personnel Audits and Animal Welfare Committee. Uh, 
Uh, are we going to hear from uh, either uh, LHD or the CAO, or are we prepared to move this report as a consent item? Move consent. Thank you, Mr. Chair. And for the record, the items before the committee are to approve the city administrative officer report dated May 20, 2022, attached to the council file Correct. and receive and file the Los Angeles Housing Department transmittal dated March 24, 2022. Council Thank you very much. Council Member Cedillo. Cedillo, aye. Council Member Rahman. Uh, yes. Yes. Council Member harris Yes. Council Member Krikorian. Aye. Council Member Lee. Aye. Five ayes and the committee's recommendations are approved. And if you'd like to move on to item number four, Mr. Chair. Mr. Como, are you ready to go to item number four? Yes, sir. Los Angeles Housing Department and City Administrative Officer reports relative to authorizing the Los Angeles Housing Department to execute a second amendment to agreement number C-136338 with Kaiser Marston Associates Incorporated for financial analysis and known underwriting services to increase the contract compensation by 20,000 for a new total of 60,000. I believe this item is uh, eligible for consent to approve the CAO report and to receive and file the transmittal dated May 9th. Is that correct? Yes, sir. Council Member Cedillo? Is that correct, Mr. Bencomo? Yes, sir. That is correct. Uh, let's call a roll on that. Yes, sir. Council Member Cedillo? Mr. Mr. Harris Dawson? Ms. Rahman, Mr. Lee, no objections. Let's move to item. Item number five is a mayor and chief legislative analyst move report. To item number five, I believe. Yes, sir. Item number five is a mayor and chief legislative analyst reports relative to the 40th, 48th program year, 2022-2023 Housing and Community Development Consolidated Plan Budget. Yes, so can we get a report from the CLA on this? Good afternoon, Mr. Chair and members of the committee. Brian, Brian Randall, Office of the Chief Legislative Analyst. I can go ahead and provide an overview of, of our, our CLA report on this item. Please. On April 4th, 2022, the mayor's office released the proposed 48th program year housing and community development consolidated plan, also known as the PY48 con plan for 2022-23. On April 13th, your housing committee instructed our office with the assistance of the community investment for families department and the city administrative officer to report on the mayor's proposed con plan budget once the city received the final entitlement amount from, from HUD, which we received on May 13th, 2022. The mayor's proposed PY48 con plan allocates U.S. Department of Housing and Urban Development funds from four federal grants from July 1st, 2022 through June 30th, 2023. Those are the Community Development Block Grant, or CDBG, the Home Investment Partnership, or Home Emergency Solutions Grant, or ESG, and the Housing Opportunities for Persons with AIDS Grant, or HOPWA. Um, collectively, the grants fund public services, economic development, housing and related programs, neighborhood improvements, and administration and planning. There is approximately $145 million in funding across all four of these grants. The city received $50,929,272 in CDBG entitlement funds, which is an increase of $1.3 million from the city's projections. This has changed the total CDBG funds available for allocation from 60, 66 million, approximately 66.64 uh, 66 million to 67.96 million. Our office has met with council districts to equitably fund projects and programs with these increased resources. In addition, 
HUD's final entitlement reflected a decrease of 99,382 for ESG, a decrease of 577,292 for home, and an increase of 96,278 for the HAQWA grant. Uh, with regard to the CDBG grant and public services, in addition to the items in the mayor's proposed budget, the CLA report recommends providing 63,989 in additional funds to the Rest Restorative Community Development Corporation Shower Trailer Program in Council District 8. In economic development, the CLA report recommends approval of the mayor's proposed allocations. This includes items such as the city's business source program at funding levels to ensure that the expanded levels that the of services that the council approved last year are maintained. In housing and related programs for CDBG, we recommend approval of, of the mayor's proposed funding levels, which were fairly consistent with last year. For the neighborhood improvement section, the CLA report does make an adjustment to the blue LA electric vehicle car share program. This program has experienced delays and has not yet expended the funds allocated to it in program year 47. To allow other council priorities to be funded, the CLA report recommends $957,902 for this program, which is a decrease of $500,000. Our report adds funds to the Domestic Violence Shelter Haven Hills ADA Improvement line item at $263,833. The Homeboy Industries Feed Hope Tortilla Kitchen in Council District 14 for 500,000 in CDBG to assist in capital improvements for this project. The Summit View Apartments Sidewalk and Public Improvement Construction in C Council District 7 for $120,000 to enable work to be completed at that site. The Ziegler Estate Mount Washington Preschool in Council District 1 for an additional $50,000 for tenant relocation during the construction process. And the, the CLA report in, inadvertently omitted discussion of the Wilmington Sports Complex project for improvements to ball, ball fields and surrounding facilities. Our report does recommend $500,000 in additional CDBG funds to address these costs. For the administration planning section, our report recommended 163,000 in additional funds to support the community investment for families department's efforts to update the five-year plan as required by the Federal Department of Housing and Urban Development. Um, with regard to the home grant, the CLA report recommends that the affordable housing managed pipeline and program delivery line item be reduced from 40.48 million to 39.91 million to address the reduced entitlement amount. While this would be a reduction from the mayor's proposed PY4 program year 48 allocation. This does reflect an increase of 7.72 million from program year 47. With regard to ESG, the CLA report notes that it is necessary to make reductions to the ESG budget since the actual ESG entitlement amount received from HUD is less than the city's projections. The CLA report recommends that the rapid rehousing line item report be reduced to nine to 921,000 as a result of slower than expected expenditures for this program due to a lack of available rental units. And finally, with regard to the HOPWA grant, due to the increased entitlement amount, there is 93,389 additional HOPWA funds. The report recommends that the 93,000 be allocated to the LEHD Housing Information Services to provide sufficient funds for this program. This would increase the total amount allocated to this program to $673,668. And that concludes our report and representatives from the Community Investment for Families Department and the CAO are here and we're available to answer any questions you may have. Thank you. You're on mute. Thank you, thank you very much for that report. Do we need any comment from CIFD? About from the CAO? Yep, we're good, CIFD is good. Yes, sir. And CAO, Mr. Harris Dawson, congratulations on your showers. Okay. 
Well, I, uh, let me recommend that we receive and file the mayor's transmittal dated April 4th, 2022 and approve the CLA report. Okay. Uh, can I ask a question before we move forward? Sure. Of course. Um, I just wanted to ask about, and I know my staff was in touch with, uh, with some folks already about this, but um, I know that there was a, a change in the rapid rehousing um, allocations by almost a million dollars. Um, and I was wondering whether you could speak to your thinking around making that change. That's a pretty big chunk of money taken away from vouchers that um, are very useful. And in our district, I know as we're doing some of these housing operations, we're actually facing a gap in voucher availability um, as we move forward with some of them. So I was just curious about this decision and, and the context around it um, and um, why money was taken from this program as opposed to others. Chris Espinosa from the CLA's office. Um, I could assist with addressing that. Um, the actual reduction is $91,000. Okay, it was less, it was, oh, okay, great. Yeah, it's a, a $91,000 reduction. Okay, so I thought it was more, sorry, I must have read it as off by yeah it is a little bit um a different when you read it on on paper but the actual when you um, subtract the the amounts it comes out to about ninety one thousand. okay we look at the different line items uh, which uh, for esg which includes emergency shelter services the homeland homeless management uh information systems um but what we did was we considered that cares act provided um, a pretty significant boost in ESG funding for rapid rehousing. Uh, tomorrow in your homelessness committee, uh, you'll see additional resources um, put towards rapid rehousing. And so we took that into um, context when we made the cut. Got it. Okay. Um, and I think in the notes that we received, uh, the numbers had been higher um, or one decimal point moved over. So it, I found it a little bit more alarming, but $91,000 change given also the other context of having additional vouchers available is, is less alarming. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Are we prepared to go forward? Mr. Uh, why don't you call the roll now? Uh, sir, uh, you do have oh, uh, Councilmember Member Harris Dawson. Dawson. I'm sorry, uh, Sherry just, Dawson. Just, My bad. Uh, because we're living in you know such a, a week and time of bad news, I want to give some good news here. Um, the you know one of our churches that got funded in this program to provide showers is a church that a year ago had a really bad encampment that was blocking their driveway, and they were absolutely insistent on the city and on the council offices and on the county that that encampment be removed that it not be allowed to come back. And so we did the work, we got the encampment removed. And the minute we got removed, the encampment removed, they said, we wanna open up our church for showers for homeless people. And that that is, uh, you know, really faith in practice at its best. Uh, so I wanted mm -hmm. to take a second here to highlight that um, given this time period and the city stepped up to help them be able to do that. Congratulations, we uh, obviously utilize those services seven days a week as well as the laundry uh, and uh, the safe parking and similar environments. And it's helped us build the type of trust uh, that's necessary as we move people into, uh, into their next step. So congratulations, very exciting. Anyone else? You wanna call the roll, Mr. Bencomo? Yes, sir. Council Member Cedillo. Do I? Do I? Council Member Raman. Yes. Council Member Harris Dawson. Yes. Council Member Krikorian. Aye. Council Member Lee. Aye. Five ayes and the committee's recommendations are approved. And with that action, the desk is clear, sir. Well, congratulations and everybody go out and serve the city and uh, enjoy the great weather of Southern California. <laughs>